Sure would be nice for a cloud to come around right now. Hey guys, and welcome back. I'm Sarah from Ugly Duckling House, and this is my DIY floating deck. I've been wanting to entertain at home for a long time, but I only had an 8x10 concrete pad, and that just didn't do well as far as trying to put furniture on it or trying to have people over. It was just too tight of a space. I decided to build this larger deck off of the existing concrete pad, and it's really made a difference as far as enjoying the backyard. And the best part was, it wasn't that hard to build, so I'm gonna walk you through that entire process from start to finish. I decided that in order for this to be easy for beginners to understand, that I needed to include more information than one video would allow, so I'm actually breaking this down into a series. Part one here is about frame and waterproofing. I wanna say thank you to my sponsor, Wood Is Real, for sponsoring this project. I am using almost entirely southern yellow pine to have built this deck, and it's pressure treated for ground contact. I'll tell you why that's important in a little bit. So let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you how this came together. With my build plans at the ready, I borrowed a truck and began cutting and pre-drilling the outside of the 2x6 frame. The shape is a little unusual because it has a 45 degree angle on two sides. So the frame comes together kind of like a baseball diamond. To make it as easy on myself as possible, I connected the straight parts of the frame first, then cut the angled pieces. To save yourself from confusion, it's always helpful to clearly mark the angle you plan to cut on the board and which side is the top. When building on uneven ground, a scrap piece of lumber is helpful as a flat surface so that my sides match up evenly. To pre-drill at an angle, I started by drilling perpendicular to the board and then moved my drill once it would no longer slip across the board surface. Be sure not to put too much pressure on the bit when doing this or you'll risk snapping the bit. In hindsight, I would have rather used screws that didn't require pre-drilling. A link to a better option is in the video description. At this point, since the outer frame is lighter than it would be once the rest of the structure was in, I took the time now to dig the frame into the ground and level things out. Keep in mind that you still want a slight slope for runoff, so I basically did my best to mirror the slope of the existing concrete patio. I now needed to keep the outer frame from moving around as the rest of the joist went in, as well as support the elevated side to keep my slope intact. So I added some temporary scraps to the corners and around the sides to fix the angles in place. I worked my way through the outer frame, cutting and connecting the remaining 2x6s. They were all spaced about 16 inches apart to ensure a nice strong frame. Once I was confident that the 2x6s were holding the frame square, I removed the temporary braces. For the widest part of the frame, the 12 foot boards I bought weren't going to be long enough to stretch all the way to the other side. So I put in another piece in about two feet away from the end to help secure the joist. Ugh. Again, just save yourself the headache of pre-drilling and buy better screws. The time saved on a project like this is huge. Also, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I'm using Southern Yellow Pine Lumber that has been approved for ground contact. There are new guidelines as of 2016 that distinguish between pressure treated wood as above ground or ground contact, as well as recommendations on when to use each. Since my new deck meets several points on this new criteria list, it made perfect sense to use it here. Not to mention Southern Yellow Pine is durable and a homegrown product, so it's often sourced right here in Georgia. That also meant it was an easy trip to find what I was looking for, as Home Depot in my area has almost all of its pressure treated wood rated for ground contact. Yeah, I've already marked if you're about to endeavor on an outdoor project like this, I highly recommend checking out my blog post that goes into more detail, which has a quick list on criteria that would make ground contact lumber the right choice. Wooditsreal.com has more info too. We also lined up, dug, and placed concrete deck blocks as evenly spaced as possible and at the corners under the entire frame. I had really only one spot where I had to use a post, and most of this frame still rests on the ground. So it all felt very sturdy as I walked around. Next, let's discuss waterproofing. There are a number of recommendations online for how to keep your deck from rotting away for as long as possible. One of these I've already covered because I'm using brown contact lumber. Other suggestions I've seen are to have gravel underneath your deck, which you can also see we did, as well as sealing the ends of cut joists and areas where the wood has direct contact with concrete, such as where the 4x4 posts touch the concrete deck blocks. I chose to give my deck a little more waterproofing by covering the frame with a rubbery flashing tape. I didn't find many options when I went searching locally, so I'll link to these types of materials in my video description. 
There was only one type I found nearby that was explicitly okay for use on decks, so I had to cut this super wide roll into thirds to get narrower strips. I eventually got the hang of it. As you can see, I also took more 2x6 material and reinforced the frame in between joists. Truth be told, since this was my first time ever doing something like this, I kept adding more and more hardware and more and more wood to the frame until I felt it was as sturdy as I could possibly get it. Even though this was mostly on the ground, I wanted to do it right, even if that meant a little overkill. I was careful when installing the main part of the frame to leave a small gap between it and the edge of the concrete pad. The frame also has a drainage hole in the corner just so it has a place to flow underneath the deck in that spot. It has a secondary purpose as well, but that's not relevant to this installation. In order to get the corner to the same height as the rest of the deck, it needed to be elevated off the concrete first. To do this, I used a 1x4 cut to fit the frame and spacing each piece about 12 inches apart. I did the same with 2x4s and began to install. Using a hammer drill and a specialty bit, I spaced each hole about two feet apart and kept going for each board. It takes a little trial and error, but I found that the easiest way was to pre-drill through the one by four with a normal bit, then use the hole to line up the hammer drill. Be patient and do a little at a time. Also drill slightly deeper than the screw will need to go, so that any dust remaining at the bottom of the hole won't prevent you from securing fully. As I mentioned, wood in direct contact with concrete will rot faster. So we stacked plastic shims underneath the entire length of the boards and secured them with the concrete screws running through the board, through the spacer, and then into the patio. If you need a little more space to get things lined up, you can also use a piece of composite trim. I tried a number of combinations before finding that my best option was the shim plus the 1x4 plus the 2x4 option. Had this been a little higher, I would have been able to use the composite trim. Once the 1x4 and shims were secured to the patio, I then screwed the 2x4 directly to the 1x4 and once again covered it all with flashing tape. We had a lot of spring storms as I installed this, so it was kind of tough to keep everything dry, which is a necessity for getting the flashing tape to stick to the wood. So as you can see, we used a plastic dish brush to clean off any dirt as the wood dried out. One last minute step was to add a few more supporting blocks to this part of the frame before the deck boards could go on. And since that's the last step in part one, that means it's finally time to start adding the deck boards. Thank you guys so much for watching part one of this series. In part two, I'm gonna show you how I got these angled boards on the deck. Getting the deck boards on at an angle like this is a little tricky, but it is possible. So I'm gonna show you how to do that next. I'll have the next part of this series up soon. So be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you guys so, Ugh. Really, who's impressed with the, mar with the motorcycle? That's ridiculous. I am melting. I'm melting in this heat. This one keeps interrupting all my videos. At least she's cute. Let's build a deck.